Aloha, welcome to, is it for real? This is Greg Dunn. I'm the president and CEO of Hawaii's Better Business Bureau. Today with us we have Pam Chambers, who's a presentation coach and public speaker, mm -hmm. who's joining us to talk a little bit about what you do and how important it is for people to learn assertiveness and effective public speaking so they can better protect themselves against fraud. So, Pam, thank you for joining us today. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you. Well, I, you know, this is, is really exciting for me because uh, over the years I've, I've heard people engage you and hire you to um, work with them. You know, you've worked with senior executives around Hawaii and around the United States and um, very highly regarded in this field. And, and we're fortunate to have you donate your time and generously give to the community and, and help folks to learn a little bit from you today. So how did you get involved in public speaking? It all started in the third grade when I did my book report. Remember doing a book report? Yeah. And I was excited about doing it. It was go going to be on Charlotte's Web. You've probably heard of that book. So I was excited and I stood there reading my book report and I made a mistake. Uh, I said a word incorrectly and one of the female leaders in the class began to laugh. And because she was a leader, everyone laughed too. And that's when I decided this is not a safe place to be. B up in front of people, being exposed and being vulnerable, it's not safe. So I made a decision to never put myself in that situation again. 20 some years later, <laughs> I accepted a job that required me to stand up in front of 300 people for one minute once a month to introduce somebody, the seminar leader. And I would shake at the back of the room. I would tremble and shake and my cheek would shake and my eyelid would twitch. And this went on for years and I never got better. And I said, you know, the only way to get better at this is to do it more often. Mm -hmm. So I asked the, the people if I could speak to small groups once a week. And so that's how I overcame it. And then I came here and found that people wanted to learn how to do what I did. So I started teaching. Wow, what a great way to, to meld, you know, something that you were personally interested in into a career. Yeah. And, like, and so, you know, as you talked about that, that fear factor that, that you experienced, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there oh, that, yes. that just loathe public speaking, getting up in front of people and mm -hmm. even talking to people in mm -hmm. general. What are some of the tips that you'd recommend that, that people do other than just doing it? What are some, some actionable items they could do um, that would help them get over that fear? Okay, so it starts mentally. The minute you agree to give a talk, the talk begins to form, almost like an embryo. And what you feed that embryo will determine the results. So if you feed it negative thoughts, oh, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna be awful, they're not gonna like what I have to say, then the talk will be bad or the presentation or the networking event or whatever it is you're doing. So you have to feed yourself the proper thoughts, such as my message will help at least one person in that room. And I'm gonna talk about something I know and love. And I'm gonna stick to what I know, I'm gonna stick with what I love, and I'm going to succeed and I'm going to help someone. As far as the adrenaline goes, that stuff that made me shake, I didn't know that it was adrenaline. So I, I thought it was terror. and. So I didn't know what to do with the terror, but it is adrenaline. And so what I recommend that people do is before you are in front of people to keep one arm natural and with your other hand, grab the seat of your chair and pull <laughs> on the chair in an upward direction for many seconds. And this releases some of that extra energy that the, ad the adrenaline is. Mm. So those are, you know, proper, things that you say to, in your head and that little pull the chair technique can really help a lot. You know, in, in the context of, um, of what we're, we're dealing with right now in our community, um, the things you're sharing are very important, particularly for our retirees who mm. many times, if they're approached outside of their house and someone puts them on the spot immediately, there's that immediate pang of fear, the adrenaline mm -hmm. gets going. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what to say, and they're kind of afraid to say. And, that, and the salespeople or the, the con artists that come door to door or even get them on the phone can be very persuasive mm -hmm. and very hammering and consistent. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to like releasing the adrenaline and thinking about what you would say, what are some other things that, 
or techniques that people could use to um, to protect themselves and facing down particularly a com like a conflict situation or one in which you feel uncomfortable okay well there are a few things a deep slow breath can help in, in not mm -hmm. feeling that we have to blurt an answer out mm -hmm. I might say that I'm gonna need to give that some thought mm. and not commit to anything except giving it some thought but let's back up it helps to mm -hmm. understand what our four pillars of communication are because they're all useful so okay. body language is one mm -hmm. and that that includes how you stand the gestures that you use the look on your face the type of eye contact that you give uh, and, and even even things like whether you're standing or sitting and where you're standing and sitting so body language can help us protect ourselves if we just are mindful of what we're doing with our body and there are weak ways to stand women when they feel weak they kind of do this solar plexus thing and they get kind of girlish and that makes us more vulnerable to anybody who might not want our best interest the second one is our voice how we use our voice so if we if we feel afraid our voice tends to go up if we're a woman and we start to do up talk and then we sound vulnerable uh, men tend to not ever do that up talk thing and they tend to do if anything it would be a monotone which can be powerful mm -hmm. Uh, and then there's the words that we use, words like, I guess, I think, this might sound stupid, but these are all weak words to use. So we have to use strong words, not weak words. And then the way we look. So that would be our, the, our image. So if someone feels frail, they, they need to not dress in a frail way. I mean, they, yeah. they, they don't need a suit of armor, but they need something that maybe a, ni a nice sturdy handbag that they can, you mm -hmm. know, kind of ground themselves with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those are the four, body language, voice, words, and image. Wow, that's a, it, it's amazing. You break it down into that, and if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I was listening to a, uh, a webinar this morning uh, you know, on uh, learning some, some marketing techniques, and the person giving the webinar, you could hear the fear in her voice oh. and the, the warbling yeah. and, and just the, the up-talking that. It's mm -hmm. a, you, you couldn't see the person, but you could hear it. And she had adrenaline. Mm -hmm. That's why her voice was quivering. She mm -hmm. had adrenaline, and no one has taught her how to get rid of it. It, the, the pulling on the chair, it's almost like letting too much air out of a tire. You don't throw the bike away, you just get rid of some of that air. So, oh, poor thing. I know, yeah. but she did a really good job. <laughs> it was like great information, but, uh, you know, it, it's the fear factor. And right. if you don't do it a lot, it's right. uh, something. So when you, you know, you had said that you had done some some requesting to be able to do more speaking. So if if people have a fear of that, um, would, are there any things that you could g give them an example of how to practice or places to practice that are safe for them to engage in? Toastmasters is great. Hmm. Anyone who wants to conquer their fear can join Toastmasters. It's international, it's everywhere, it's not expensive at all, and it's usually weekly. And it's a group of maybe 15 to 20 people who are all in the same boat, and they practice. Every, every week they have some role in the meeting that allows them to chip away at this big boulder called fear. And so that's good, and I teach classes also that people can learn about. So when you talk about chipping away at the fear, how does that eventually lead to assertiveness? And how important is assertiveness in the, the communication struggle? Well, let's take networking for an, as, as an example. People go to a networking event supposedly to meet new people, right? Mm -hmm. But when they step into that room and they see a sea of faces, a lot of them they don't know, they scan the room to find a familiar face and then they mistakenly go and sit with that person and they don't really do any real networking. But I recommend that people, every time they go to something like that, that they do three things. Meet the most important person in the room in their mm -hmm. estimation. So if everywhere you went you could walk up to the most important person in the room and introduce yourself, that would build your self-esteem. It would build your assertiveness. Yeah, they probably won't bite you. Right? <laughs> they won't, they'll be flattered. I mean, yeah. who wouldn't be? So I wanted to meet you because I consider you to be the most important person in the room today. It could be the MC. And say that. Yes. 
yeah. why not? Yeah. It could be the MC, it could be the guest speaker, it could be the organizer. Then meet someone who might intimidate you. Now, I'm not talking about a dangerous person, but someone, for me, it used to be women with better clothes than I had. <laughs> I would be intimidated by yeah. beautiful women in great clothes. So I would shy away from meeting those people. And then I overcame that and started to walk up to those women. And I thought, look at all the people I haven't met because of that ridiculous fear that I had. And then meet someone that you know you could learn from if, if, mm -hmm. if you could forge a friendship with them, they would have so much that you could learn from. And, and so those three people, and then sit with your friends. <laughs> so if everywhere you went, you did that, you would, you would build your self-esteem, you would build your assertiveness, nothing would scare you anymore. So I, I like the way you said it, if you did that everywhere you went, because yeah. you think about it in terms of taking this, this very, uh, very proven, business networking technique and you apply it to when you go to say your church or mm -hmm. place of worship or you go to a community center mm -hmm. or uh, a you know, book club a, uh, yeah it, wherever you go there are people there mm -hmm. a, a sporting event t t chat up the people next to you right. talk to someone in line at longs it's it's one of those things you never know really who you're going to meet and it's if you think of it as an enjoyable game and and you know it's it can really help you out. And the game has three rules, okay. and that's it. D and then you can you can say, I, I did well, and then you can <laughs> and then move on. And then go into your zone. comfort zone. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Jinx. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, it, you know, you think about building the assertiveness. Um, you, feel, you begin to feel comfortable in conversations and protecting yourself. Um, what are what are some of the things that people should do if they're, if they're feeling pressured? If they're in a situation where they've gone up to someone and they're talking to them, and that person not what they thought, or they're a charlatan, or they're trying to take advantage of you. One thing that people have a lot of trouble with, even if they f feel safe with the person that they're with, is ending a conversation. That's really hard for some people. So it, it's, we need to learn how to say, it's been lovely chatting with you. Enjoy the rest of the event. Goodbye. <laughs> Or, it was nice talking with you, could we exchange business cards and a handshake? Everyone knows that that means this is coming to a close. And then you have to literally turn and walk away. And if you're with someone who's intimidating you or trying to pull one over on you, you can say, you know, I'm, I'm going to end this conversation now. Thank you for your, your efforts. Have a nice day. That's a very polite way of doing it and, uh, and one that, that especially if it's you're dealing with someone face to face if someone's come door to door or or, or has approached you on your property that's a, a very polite way to do it as opposed to on the phone you can just hang up the phone oh yeah but but i mean imagine i mean even i'm i'm a healthy strong person when i hear a knock on the door I, my hackles go up unless it, you know unless i was expecting somebody mm -hmm. but and then you look through the peephole or you look through the blinds and you see someone you don't know especially if it's a man and you're a woman and you're alone in your home. I mean, don't even answer the door. It's a good point. You don't have to answer the door. You do not. You don't have to answer the phone. No. It's like I, I remember growing up in our house, that if, if the phone rang around dinner time, it didn't get answered. Oh, that, nice. that, that was old school, right? Yeah. Now it's like the, the nephews are all on. Well, the, now on, there is no dinner time. <laughs> there's no dinner time. Everyone's <laughs> sitting around on the phone. Uh, playing games or chatting or you know, Snapchatting or whatever. Dinner time um, is where we yeah. learned our table manners. And mm -hmm. at, often I'll ask an audience, how many of you were required to sit at the table at a certain time every night except date night when you were growing up? And all the hands go up. How many of you require that now of your family? Very few hands mm -hmm. go up. So the conversation skills aren't learned at the table, the table manners, the the talking about something that troubled you and getting some feedback from your family, so much is missing now. It, it's amazing that when you, when you think about that breakdown in communication, and that breakdown in communication leads to a, not only a breakdown in trust, but also a breakdown in ethics, mm -hmm. because you don't understand the connection between being civil to one another and oh. and understanding how to take care of other people and caring about other people. Yes. Uh, that it makes it much more easier for you to feel isolated, that's about me, and 
it's okay for me to to pull this one over on you. Ah. It, uh, it psychologically, it's a, a very difficult um, period in time for us as a society. Mm, good point. And if, and why can't we say, I'm starting to feel suspicious about what you're selling to me, or mm -hmm. I'm I'm feeling uncomfortable with this. I'm going to terminate the call now, mm -hmm. or why don't you give me your number and I'll call you back if I want to. I mean, you know, exactly. to, to, yeah. just it's okay stand to say up no. for ourselves. Stand yeah. up for yourself right. in the situation where someone's approaching you and asking you to do something that you're not comfortable with. And follow our gut. Uh, you mm. know, these con artists, they're, they're, they have the body language down. I mean, they, they're, they know what they're doing. They have the vo voice, the mm -hmm. they have all that. So we have to follow this and mm -hmm. listen to this, and this tells the truth. Yeah, so if there's a, a pang of anxiety, if there's unease, if, if you have that moment where you worry about oh, what will people think, Right. it's like, you know, the, those can be detrimental thoughts. They can also be life-saving thoughts mm -hmm. because it's, uh, you know. The, the value of fear. That's right. And okay, so let's say that I'm a shy person and someone I don't know comes up to me. Mm -hmm. I might feel that pang. That's not necessarily because you're dangerous. It's mm -hmm. because I haven't overcome my, mm -hmm. my insecurities yet. But let's say I'm feeling okay with you, mm -hmm. and then you say something or do something that sends off an alert. That's what I should be paying attention to. Right. I need to borrow $5,000 because you know, the, of this, or I've got this great business opportunity. We just, particularly for old people, it's like oh. we, you know, we need a little bit more money, so would you mind if we mortgaged your house and, and take the money out of it? And um, the online stuff, put right. in your, they say don't even open a file if you right. don't know the person who sent it to you. Exactly. And even if you do know the person, don't open it. It's <laughs> yeah, like, I, it's like I, I, the last week, uh, an, an old job I worked for, their email server got hacked. And I haven't mm. been there for four years. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, that old email address was sending out um, spyware to everyone that was still in that company's, um, in, in their address book. Oh. And so I had people calling me going, why are you sending me a financial document for your old company? I'm like, I don't, don't open it, oh. turn it off, delete it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's spyware, mm -hmm. it's gonna take over your computer. Mm -hmm. um, you know. How about the, the, the thing where I, I'm out, I'm traveling and my my whole all my belongings got stolen. Can you wire money? Yeah. People have actually absolutely paid attention to that. They'll get the email and think that it, it that person really is in Mexico and it, it needs to get out of jail and, and that happens. The other one that's really scary is is for grandparents and mm. uh, it's called the grandparent scam and it's where you'll get a call in the middle of the night saying, "Hi, Grandma. This is Bobby." Um, you know, I've been in a terrible accident and I'm at the police station and they're gonna throw me in jail if I don't come up with, with the money. I need you to send me 500 or $1,000 right away via Western Union. And, and you know, the grandparent is shaken up. They're, the adrenaline gets going because they wanna protect the grandchild. But do they not say that I don't recognize your voice? Well, or it's, maybe so many years. I mean, years can pass. Yeah. What's happened with social media is that so much more of your grandchildren and your children's lives are now public record. Uh -huh. That if they don't have their their internet profiles locked down, that information is available publicly, mm -hmm. and people use that mm -hmm. against, uh, particularly against the elderly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, no grandparent wants to to say no to their grandchild. So the, the important part is for them to like get more information. Yeah, let me talk to your mom. Yeah, let me Have talk to your mom. Have your mom call me. Mm -hmm. yep. we, we need to work this out together. Have your mom call or your dad call. It's okay to ask for help and not be embarrassed about it. Mm -hmm. So reach out to a family member. Um, you know, is Bobby really in Mexico or... Um, you know, have you heard? Are they really in trouble? Mm. Um, and you know, mm. the family members can then reach out and see if it's if it's really the case. Oh, that's great. But you know, really, it gets back to that assertiveness and and not falling victim to the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So um, it's something that, particularly if um, you know, as retirees have not had careers where they've been out in public a lot or done a lot of public speaking, um, that it's difficult to be assertive and say no. Right, and if they're not on the computer a lot, uh, mm -hmm. reading about these things, and, and a lot of them aren't, 
they don't even hear about these things. All of this could be completely new to them. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's so important for us to have uh, experts like yourself mm. on this program so that the seniors who are at home watching television during the day or have access to it to um, learn these skills and techniques uh, to protect themselves. I think that every day offers us opportunities to practice our assertiveness. For example, the other day I was at Lungs and I'm there almost every day it seems, make Lungs a part of your day, and someone was standing too close behind me mm -hmm. and kind of brushing against me with her, her purse. I said, could I ask you to just back up just a step or two? Yeah. And I said it very gently like that, but mm -hmm. I was asserting myself. Mm -hmm. I was asserting the right for me to have privacy and safety and my own space, but I did it very, uh, you know, kind of like that. Very so polite. there are times when that kind of voice is useful, but mm. we need to do it deliberately. Or let's say that you're in a restaurant and the food comes and it wasn't what you had in mind. To, to be able to say, this isn't quite what I had in mind, could we do something different? Every day, every day we have a chance to know what our truth is and find a way to express it and that muscle just gets stronger every time. So it's really about standing up for what you believe in and finding a way to politely articulate that to the other party. Mm -hmm. Setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. When people ask, let's say they ask for if they can borrow your car mm -hmm. and, and you don't want people borrowing your car, I would say, I, I try to not use the word no. So okay. I, I wish I could, I have a policy ab against lending my car out. What I can do is give you some information about Uber or um, the t the t one of the taxis. I wish I could, what I can do is this or that. So that you're mm. not even using the word no, but you're extricating yourself from. You're essentially saying that it's okay for you to not want to do it and you're offering an alternative that you can do. Right and that right. you're comfortable with. Right. So don't do something you're uncomfortable with. Oh, the messes we get ourselves in. Even going places that we knew we didn't want to go, we knew we didn't want to accept that invitation, but we said we would go, and then the date looms up, and we, we, feel, we feel dread, mm -hmm. and we look for a reason to not have to go. And if we had just said, that's not something I feel like doing. It's okay. <laughs> from, from the get-go. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I, absolutely. I, you know, my mind is racing with all of those invitations <laughs> I've gotten where it's like, oh, I should, have do, you know, I should do that or I feel obligated. Well, uh, one reason we feel mm -hmm. obligated is that we do make a difference if we go or don't go. I mean, some people think or they want to believe that no one will miss them, but we, we will miss them. Mm -hmm. And so don't lie about your intention. Mm -hmm. Oh, it won't matter if I don't go. And then that person's hurt and they were expecting you and you thought you didn't matter, but you do matter. So in other words, don't make the commitment not go. Just simply state that up front, uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to accept the invitation or... Uh, if you know right away that mm -hmm. this isn't something you're going to want to do when that day rolls around. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, uh, that's powerful because, again, it's empowering you to feel okay about what you want to do. Yeah, and, and so many people don't even know what they want. They, they, they haven't even given themselves permission to s ask themselves, wait, is that something I am going to want to do? Is, does that fit my purpose? Mm. D is that who I am? And who I am is I don't go to noisy nightclubs anymore. That's who <laughs> I am. I, I don't accept right, that. Right. I can't even... I used to go. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah that, was, that was a while ago. That was okay then, not so much now. Lots of point. noise was fine. Now I choose my restaurants based on will I be able to hear the person that I'm sitting with. It's not important yeah. to have a conversation. Right. Well, you know, we were talking before the show a little bit about your website mm. and about some of the tools that you have available for people that, that are free of charge, mm -hmm. available for the public. Um, talk about the, the, the Pam shorts that you have. Well, I will, but first I <coughs> want to talk about something oh, else. Okay. There's a digital book okay. that, uh, that I wrote. It's called Life is a Presentation. Okay. And by, by subscribing to my very infrequent messages, <laughs> 
<laughs> people can get that book for free. Oh, okay. And it's 83 pages, large font, lots of space. It's you, you can read it in an hour and a half, and it's uh, it's all about the things that we're talking about. That life is a presentation. So, so people can folks get that. can download that. Uh -huh. They'll subscribe and uh -huh. get the ebook yep. in exchange for it's, that. It's free. It's real easy. It's pamchambers.com. And then if you go to it on the home page, it says click here to see Pam in action. And if you click there, it takes you to a table of contents of my super short shows. Mm. And they're little video snippets that none of them are longer than 40 seconds. But they're about life's dilemmas. What's your favorite one? Oh, my favorite one is don't start your presentation with a joke. Oh. So I'm holding a book in my hand that I'm pretending is a book that I don't have because I don't want the book. But it was, there is a book called A Thousand and One Jokes to Start Off Your, First pre your Next Presentation. And I say, this book is about starting your presentation with a joke. And this book is full of jokes. And then I toss it over my shoulder <laughs> and you can hear it landing on the floor in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and I say it's better to use the humor that's there in the moment instead mm. of using a stale joke that you probably won't even tell very well. That's oh, my favorite that. one. No, that, that's, I, I appreciate that. I was <laughs> at, a, at a conference uh, last week where someone tried to open up their statement with, with a joke, and it, it, it wasn't germane to the crowd. It was right. forced, and, yeah. it was, and that person got off to a very uncomfortable start. Mm -hmm. So. Well, Pam, as we're, we're winding down, we've got a little bit of time to left. What's one thing you'd like to leave people with uh, to think about as, as they contemplate how to create assertiveness in their life? One thing that I'm talking about a lot lately is if, if people let you down or if people don't do what they said they would do or if you don't do what you said you would do, to determine whether this is a commitment problem or an ability problem? Was the person not committed or was the person not able? And if you can figure that out, then you know how to assert yourself as you try to solve whatever that problem was. Were you not committed mm -hmm. or were you not able? That's great advice because in, in management you have those that are willing to change and those that are not able to change. And uh, you have to determine the the difference. Which it is. Exactly. Be a detective. <laughs> so be inquisitive, be assertive, mm -hmm. uh, and enjoy your life. Yeah. Be happy about it. Yeah. So. Well, Pam, I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your very busy schedule and, and training classes to join us today, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you. It's been very enjoyable. Thank you. Look forward to it. And I want to thank you for joining us again. Uh, this is Gregory Dunn, and you've been watching Is This For Real? Uh, as part of Hawaii's Partnership Against Fraud. Be sure to check your Better Business Bureau if you have any questions or if you're concerned that you're falling victim to fraud. Aloha.